and the word among us for future use. Anything left on the pews will be discarded. Drinking fountains are marked off limits. The baptismal font is marked off limits. The collection basket will not be passed at the operatory. You may drop your Sunday envelope, love offerings located in the vestibule and designated exit doors. Opportunities to set up a recurring financial gift are also available through Faith Direct and QR code through Venmo. Thank you for your generoso generosity. Holy Communion will be offered only in the form of bread and in the hand. It will not be offered on the tongue. Lines for communion will be monitored to maintain social distancing. An usher will dismiss your family from the pew to the designated exit doors. Please return to your vehicle quickly so that we can clean and sanitize the church for the next Mass. We invite you to continue to stay connected to the Paris life of St. Lorenzo Ruiz Church by checking out our website, www.stlorenzo.org. Confessions are also being offered by appointment only. You may sign up on your website or call the office at 909. 595-9549-45 for an appointment. Now let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for the Mass. On behalf of our pastor, Father Tony, and our parish community, welcome home. Please take a moment to welcome those seated around you. May we remind you to please turn off all your electronic devices. Today, as every Sunday, Jesus has called us to celebrate together the Eucharist. And we, according to this invitation, have come to the temple, each with our life, our joys and sorrows, and our desire to hear a word that is spiritual food and light in our daily work. Let us be ready to leave this meeting with the Lord with intensity and joy. He has saved our lives from the hand of the wicked what a mighty warrior stands beside us and protect us. He listened to us, for he is good and faithful in helping us. Because God is merciful, we are given the gift that far surpasses our crimes. His grace makes us worthy to enter into his presence. Today, on the day on which we honor fathers, our own fathers, stepfathers, foster fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, and fathers of all kinds, we look to the Holy Trinity as a model for the loving relationship for which we strive for in our own families. Our theme for this month of June, Lord, send out your spirit and renew our families and our community of faith. Our sponsors for the month of June, sponsor for Altar Bread, Annie Pukasawa, 
in memory of Tamio Pukasawa, Irineo and Pelisa Castro Sr., and in celebration of Annie and Eileen Pukasawa's birthday and in Thanksgiving. Sponsor of the Eucharistic Wine, Annie Pukasawa in memory of Tamio Pukasawa, Irineo and Pelisa Castro Sr., and in celebration of Annie and Eileen Pukasawa's birthday and in Thanksgiving. Sponsors for the light, Cynthia Suba for June Suba's 10th death anniversary. The special intentions for the Mass are for the following who have passed away. Magno R. Balias, Ui Ku Chu, Catalina Pamiligan, Francisco Nasino, Pastor C. Samara, Justo San Jose, and Romeo Giron. Let us now stand and join our choir in singing as we greet our presider. Padre Ray. Padre Ray. Yes. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, for us to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, first we acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
that we may always revere and love your name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm in the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble and they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you are who test the just, who prove mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord and praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man's sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin, for up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted, where there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who has to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim in the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even the, all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. It's a blessing, no? How nice to be here that we are able to come to Mass, although in these very limited uh, circumstances because of the guidelines. But at least we are so blessed to have been able to come to Mass and join and participate and adore and be with the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. You know in these times, there's that feeling of uncertainty, worry, and fear. And what a fitting message because the sacred scriptures, the gospel particularly, has reminded or is reminding each and every one of us. Fear no one. Do not be afraid. But of course, we may say that our worry and our certainty is because of the virus. There is that fear that we get infected. And that is why we have to be careful and we are taking precautions. At the same time, we have that worry also and that fear because of the uncertainty, what's going to come next. It's affecting, of course, our financial resources. And many of our brothers and sisters most likely are having difficult times. Many lost their jobs and having unstable means or resources to find support for themselves and their families and loved ones. So we are in these uncertain times. But if we come to think of it, it's not just about the crisis in terms of the pandemic. It's also a crisis of faith because we know that in our faith, in the witnessing of it, in the practice of it, the world that we live is also hostile. It's not favorable. And even with this pandemic, no? with the reopening also, and the considerations of what and who are safe in what places, remember even our faith and the worship, the public celebrations, it's considered as non-essential. 
And yet, the sacred scripture is reminding us the gospel that it says, And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. There's that false fear as compared to true fear in the true God. Because we know that our body is mortal and our soul is immortal and destined for all eternity. And for us, people of faith, believers, children of God, if there's one thing that matters to us, it's really our faith. And that is why it's so fitting no? that the sacred scriptures is reminding us of this. The importance of our faith, the importance of our soul, the importance of our salvation. And if there's one thing positive that this crisis bring and make a, making us realize these days, is really that our life is so fragile. Even though we may say that we are healthy and we have all the resources and we have some insurances and all those securities, materially speaking, and yet anything can happen. And that is why we think twice and reflect what truly matters in our life. And if we say that in the practice of our faith, there's this hostile situation that we are fronting these days. And even in the way the world is treating us, then the more we assert and stand for our faith, the more we dedicate time to be with the Lord in prayer, to come to us. Because again, it's our aspiration that both body and soul be saved. You know, these days, we all know that even in the message of the gospel, when the Lord said, nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in light. What you hear whispered, proclaim in the housetops. But the way the culture is and the world that we live today, it's not that it's only in darkness, even in broad daylight. It's not just in the housetops. Because of the advance and the more complex and developed means of communication these days, we have the social media with all these mobile phones, Messenger, Facebook, Twitter. We call it social media. At our disposal, technology, even in the comforts of our homes, and not necessarily the truth, not necessarily the things that would enrich our faith, not necessarily that are favorable to the practice of our faith and the principles that we hold on as important. Individually, as a family with our parents' children, name it. We have these trollers, we have this fake news. And even in the proclamation of the Word of God, there are so many distortions. And the more, when we say that fear not, do not be afraid, it's not just an assertion what believe it. We have to be discerning of what really is the truth. According to the sacred scriptures, the Bible, the doctrines of the church. Because that's the world we live. Just as 
It was true during the time of the apostles and the early Christians, as St. Paul would remind us in the second reading in the letter to the Romans. Because we are in a world where sin exists, where death and sin has an effect of original sin with our first parents, Adam. And that's the same world where Jeremiah lived in the first reading who was struggling because even his friends turned into enemies. And we know it. That even in the practice of our faith, there are complications, there are challenges, there are oppositions. Even within the homes, parents among children, among siblings, our close friends, because as we say it, you cannot please everybody. And the truth is not necessarily and always pleasing to others. There are times that the truth hurts. And that's the world that we live more than ever that our prophetic role is being challenged these days. And yet, the message of the Word of God is not only a warning, but so comforting, realizing, as St. Paul would remind us in the second reading, that with, as with one man, there's that fall into sin in the world with another a new man in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation came into this world. And that's the message because the antidote of fear is love the Lord Jesus even the trials and difficulties remain firm till the end because of his communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit he remained firm till the end even unto death and in the words of Jeremiah sing joyfully to the Lord for a Christian, a believer, a son and daughter of God will never lose that joy in the heart even in the midst of trials and difficulties because our life our light, our salvation is the Lord. So, dear brothers and sisters, in these difficult times, we should not forget what truly matters in our life, the value of our faith, the salvation of our soul. Yes, we live in a very difficult world, in these uncertain times, but what gives us joy, what gives us comfort, what gives us hope is our faith and trust in the Lord. The Word of God is so comforting but we live in a reality in a world that is full also of discomfort. And yet, we remain courageous because we put all our trust in the Lord. May the Holy Spirit bless Enlighten, strengthen each and every one of us. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God knows our supplications before we voice them, yet God wants us to lift up our voice in petitions. For all who call to lead the church, working to evangelize all who seek the truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to government service, striving to lead in ways of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who long for honorable employment and strive for a living wage, especially those who have been out of work due to the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this parish community, as we do our best to reflect the face of Christ to others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fathers, grandfathers, and all who have fathered and guided us throughout our lives, for those who are living and those who have passed on to eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, the dying, and those who care for them, and for those who have died, especially for Anita Mendoza, Angela Peliciano, and Cherry Ilagan Bailey, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the special intention of all gathered here, and the unspoken prayers in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you share with us part of yourself the spirit of truth. Hear the prayers we offer. With hearts void by your constant love, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that this of our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of the Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we make offering of heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin by the passion of the cross. He freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church prayer throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have died, especially Mario Poronganan, Sio, Sio Cuevas, 
Fernando Maria de Rosa, Pedro Cuevas, Yusdado Vije, Magno Valles, Oiko Chu, Catalina Pamina, Francisco Nacino Pastor Samela, Justo San Jose, and Romeo Heron. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, O Lord, especially for the intentions of Shelby Lopez. That together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we bear to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you always. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
please join me in singing as Christ is for us.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Now the, to the fathers present, kindly remain standing. All the rest, please be seated for a special prayer and blessing for the fathers. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, happy Father's Day and a round of applause <laughs> to our fathers. I guess there are no announcements, no? So please stand all. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.